just a loud explosion all at once. And I looked back and saw the doors falling off like they really never was attached. Operation Baby Lift was enacted during the closing days of the war to get orphans out of Vietnam before the fall of Saigon. Phil Wise was a medical technician in the United States Air Force. He was on board a C-5A Galaxy aircraft loaded with hundreds of babies, children, and adults. The crowded plane took off and the evacuation ordered by President Ford seemed to be headed towards success until the rear doors blew off at 25,000 feet and everything changed. We started inplaning the kids and we started with the infants by uh, placing them upstairs in the C-5 in the troop apartment. So we formed this chain line where we would pass the kids up the ladder and place them in their seats. And all the uh, older kids and adults and litter patients were positioned in a cargo section on the floor. We didn't have seats down there. We sat on the floor and we used military cargo tie-down straps across our laps to secure us in for takeoff. I remember the door closing and the engine starting up and all of a sudden this uh, fresh cold air started coming through the cabin which we really, really needed because it was so hot. Of course, the, the stench of these kids needing diaper changes and things like that it was pretty, pretty raw. minutes into the flight. Normally when we fly over combat zone, we, use, we usually cruise at an altitude between 35,000 and 50,000 feet. So we had taken off, we got up to about 25,000 feet, close to it, and suddenly this loud explosion happened, or this loud noise, boom! Happened. And I looked back, I saw the rear cargo doors and ramp rip off the aircraft and we were at 23,000 plus feet and I remember seeing the sky, blue sky, the white clouds and the cold air and everything that we had placed in the rear of the aircraft or aft the aircraft went out with the doors and I remember hearing the screaming and yelling and, and a lot of fog in the air. I remember being thrown about. I'm not sure if I grabbed a cargo tight on strap or not, but I got to the point where I tried to breathe and I couldn't breathe. And uh, at that point we were in what they call a rapid decompression. So all the, all the oxygen in the cabin had left out the cabin when the doors went out. So at 20-some thousand feet, we didn't have anything to breathe. I remember seeing bodies sucked out. I remember the coldness. And uh, at that point, I knew it was uh, abnormal to see the sky at that point. I tried to stay focused. I never thought I was going to die. I didn't have time to think about that. But, I, but the screaming and the yelling and the fear around me was saying otherwise. So therefore, I didn't have time to get, uh, be afraid because I was un unable to breathe. I tried to breathe, but I couldn't breathe. Well, the pilot, what he did, he tried to uh, turn the aircraft around and go back to the base. Tonsonute Air Force Base, Saigon. And uh, when the doors blew off, that broke the hydraulic system that was a part of the aircraft. So the pilot had trouble uh, maneuvering the aircraft. So what, so what he did, he would descend down and try to pull the aircraft up to break his descent, the speed of descent. He would go down and pull it up. So we got to the point where we were over the South China Sea when the doors blew off, by the way. So instead of crash landing in the South China Sea, 
he tried to make it back to the base. And he realized that he wasn't going to make it. He was able to get to the rice paddies and he clipped this tree line and uh, he ended up bellowing down after clipping the tree line. And we had the side out of the river. He ended up bellowing, bellowing down on one side of the side out of the river and we went airborne again. And we just barely cleared the other side of the river. And the aircraft bounced and bounced and broke apart. And keep in mind that uh, when we bellied down, we had a uh, belly full of, full of passengers. And of course, I was down there myself. And the, the true compartment, which was upstairs. Now the C-5, from the, the wheel to tail, is a five-story aircraft. So when the belly, we bellied down, the whole bottom just demolished, just flat. And the debris was scattered from the bottom. The true compartment where the babies were, that part slid off the, the belly of the cargo section like a toboggan. You know, it slides off, it broke away, and it rolled over and kind of slid off. So we only lost two kids in the true compartment. But in the cargo compartment, we lost everybody. I found out later that I was the only survivor out of nearly 200 out of that cargo section. Air America, which is an arm of the CIA, they cordoned off the crash site. As soon as the plane crashed, the local villagers just raced to the crash site, just pillaging the crash site, just taking whatever they could. The CIA saw me off to a distance in the burning wreckage, and I wore a, my uniform was a, a white shirt with dress blue trousers. So they saw my white shirt off to a distance. They said, wow, we gotta save the medic's body so it won't burn. So they, once they got to me, they found me hanging upside down, my left leg entangled in wire cable. And it's, my head was open, my eyeball hanging out, my chest. And they said, well, we better save his body so it won't charge. So they got to untangling me, and then they said, wow, this dude's still alive. Fragile delivery is it, about the fears of having to go to war, knowing that each year thousands and thousands of soldiers were dying. And I knew that when it was my turn to go, I had a decision to make, so I decided to go in the Air Force. And when I did my thing in the Air Force, I come across this situation called Operation Baby Lift, a story that needed to be told through my vision, through my eyes, from what I saw these fragile little kids and babies that were caught up in this war that was no fault of their own. Sharing the story with the, well, these babies, surviving an airplane crash, growing into adult life, and being adopted all over the world. And Fragile Delivery allows me to reconnect with some of these kids that I help airlift after they, be, are, after they become adults. And I thought, this fragile delivery would uh, capture my my life story as it pertains to Operation Baby Lift. the uh, Peaceful Warrior Project, um, they wanted to give Mr. Wise uh, this. Um, thank you for your service. Thank you for your heroism. Yes. Thank you, sir. Uh, just a small token. 
appreciation for everything you've done. Oh, thank you, sir. Yes, sir. All right. Oh, okay, I, I appreciate uh, General Stone. This is a gracious award. I wasn't expecting all this, so thank you very much. <laughs>